people are starting to like look not so nervous when they walk on the street which is good <laughs> what about you Michelle? yeah oh. I, I, i've been going pretty good i um started well i started streaming on twitch uh two years ago when the whole pandemic started and um it's been going well and i love it a lot it's really fun and i met a lot of really cool people doing it so um, yeah, I've been doing pretty good. <laughs> Hanging in there. I miss, I mean, I miss Carter a lot. I used to see him a lot more I than I do now. I haven't Thanks. seen you in like two years. I miss you. Uh. I miss you too. Ah. <laughs> it's been way too long. It's just crazy. So, uh, I remember you had mentioned that you were a news reporter for just a small while. News reporter, right? Wait, I have trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. I apologize. Can you hear me now? This is better. Test, test. One, two, three. Can you hear That's me That's better? better. Yes. All right. So I'm going to yell like this. <laughs> oh, dear. Michelle, you were a reporter for a small time, correct? A, a what? Say that again. I'm sorry. You were a reporter, correct? A reporter? Um... Back in the day, just a little bit, you were in the news world? Well, yeah, I, I was. I, I worked, uh, I wasn't a reporter. Uh, I mostly did um, writing for it and uh, behind the scenes stuff, like audio camera, things like that. Um, I worked for a CBS and an NBC affiliate in Pennsylvania for a little bit, and I worked at MSNBC for a little bit, which is actually in New Jersey. You would yeah. think in New York, like, you know, normal NBC and <laughs> CBS and all of those stations, but actually MSNBC is in Secaucus, New Jersey, which is which is funny. So I'm a Jersey girl born and raised, so <laughs> that's where I live now. Um but yeah, I did work in New I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> so the question from all that time to now, did you think you were gonna be a famous voice actress from where you started out? Uh, no, well, no, I, I, well, I was a theater person. I was a theater major in college and, but I, I changed majors and I studied radio and television broadcasting and I ended up in news, but I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of my transition into voiceover because, you know, I, I didn't like news. <laughs> it wasn't fun. <laughs> it was it was too real. No. <laughs> now, James, you were a musician when you started out back in the day, right? Wait. You were a musician. You were. Oh, a musician I'm sorry. You, I'm, I, the ambience is really intense. So I'm at, So maybe yeah. I can have a translator. It's fine. Right. Um, yes, I am <laughs> still am a musician. You started off as a musician. Did I you started think uh, playing piano at five, and um, my first voice job happened. Uh, 1991, I was doing the music for a show on ABC called the ABC Weekend Special. And it was a, you know, it was a brand new theme package and they wanted another person to voice uh, O.G. Readmore, who was the cartoon cat host of ABC Weekend Special. And, and they asked me if I knew somebody and I thought to myself, this is it. I said, yeah, I know somebody, <laughs> me. So I auditioned, I got the part, and I think I did that for at least a couple of years. And it was great because uh, O.G. Readmore was part of Project Literacy, which 
I would go into all these libraries and there would be a full size cardboard cutout of OG Read More, you know, and say, read a book. So that was my first voiceover gig. And ever since then, it's just gotten crazier and crazier. Carla, you also um, do the script translations, correct, for the Pokemon from the uh, Japanese to English? I don't do the translations. That's actually our friend uh, Bill, who uh, Getman, who lives in, in Japan. He gives me the literal translation of what's going on of the script, and then I get the Japanese video, and then I proceed to rewrite everything so it makes sense and is hopefully funny and um i've been doing that for 20 years so that's wow. cool how far can you stray from the original script when you're working <laughs> my goal <laughs> for every script is to completely stray as far as i can because <laughs> if i don't it's not going to be as funny like team rocket's funny so i have to say stuff that has nothing to do with the translation so i just completely rewrite it and if i say something wrong there are plenty of editors that will pull me back but that's okay I, I get away with quite a bit of stuff I used to get away with murder <laughs> but now it's a little bit you know now there are 12 editors that look at every script that I write and uh, I look back at them and go <laughs> but it's good I, I love it can I say one of my favorites um, kind of recently was the fish heads one I was just going to ask you that go ahead fish, what was it it was a uh, fish cakes it was like the fish fish heads roly poly fish heads but we did where we said something else that was really funny <laughs> yeah we just pulled that i forget exactly what it was but that yeah we riffed off that and sponge cake every, was it sponge every cake? so often i'll riff off something and they'll go uh we don't want to get sued by such and such so <laughs> but so i pull it back a little bit but i tell you i get away with the thing that's great now is because i'm an old fogey um <laughs> I Stop. can do jokes like from the 50s and I'll pull Bugs Bunny humor and all this kind of stuff. And the people that are editing me, they're like 20, 30 years younger and oh, they don't they even don't know. know it. It goes <laughs> right over their head. So it makes me very, very happy. So in this case, being an old fogey is a plus. So when you're writing the dialogue, essentially, for Jesse and James, because over the years, you two have had such a, a chemistry. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you tend to write a little extra because of that chemistry or do you feel like equivocally across the board for everybody? Everybody's different. That, that's the thing I've learned. It took me, I started writing scripts in season five. So I'd been in the show since season one, first episode, because I was Gary Oak. So in the process of voicing Gary, you kind of learn how everybody thinks and talks and uh, it, it I would say Jesse and James and Meowth are the, me, the funniest characters, but I'll tell you, Ash is just turning into a pip. I mean, <laughs> he really is funny now because of the way they're kind of imagining him. You know, he's, uh, he's kind of back to being 10 with a vengeance after 25 <laughs> years, but they're all different. They're all different, uh, Royce, but I feel like I, I feel comfortable with writing, you know, for all of them. They all do jokes when they want. <laughs> so just as a reminder, we have a microphone over there. If anybody has any questions, you can line up and ask those questions. Uh, Michelle, I'm sure you've uh, been asked this many a time. But because you are now a woman of a thousand Pokemon voices. <laughs> a thousand? <laughs> how do you decide to differentiate between each voice? And how do you make each one distinct? 70. No, I like 70. But I think Carter's more than I am. Are you? I don't know. I mean, sometimes I'll <laughs> How go many with are the you dub, now? <laughs> and then and Lisa will say, okay, we're doing blah, blah today. And I go, oh, nice. Who does that? And she goes, you. So, because yeah. <laughs> it's been such a long time, but I do quite a few anyway. Do you actually have to go back and listen to an old track of yourself to remind yourself what you sound yeah, like? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, Pokemon will show up and I'm just like, I don't remember what this sounds like. Right. So then they'll have to pull up a reference. I mean, oh, that, that's what it sounds like. Now I remember. Right. It helps. It helps to be just even if just to focus it in like where it was. Because yeah. some of these characters, like for me, it's been I, I think I did um, Grimer for the first time since season one. And so oh, wow. it's like I knew what he <laughs> sounded like in my head, but it's I have a different head than I did 25 years ago. So it's good <laughs> to have a reference just to kind of own it in, you know? Yeah. Well, Carter, I know um, you said you were a fan of Mel Blanc in previous interviews. 
Yeah. Yeah. He's this the is best. He, Mel Blanc is like Eric Clapton was God. Well, Mel Blanc is God too. <laughs> Uh, his voice has changed. Well, his voice had changed over the years, even voicing the same character. Do you find that to be a difficult challenge to try to keep that same voice over the years? No. I mean, I, I, I feel very blessed because, you know, the, Team Rocket, as I know Michelle knows, especially lately, screams a lot. We oh, get yeah. blown to smithereens all the time. <laughs> and when Team Rocket gets blown up, I mean, James is in the, he's like soprano range. He's way in the upper stratosphere. <laughs> so I have not, I don't smoke and um, I've kept my yeah. my range, thank God. I've actually added some notes on the bottom, but I've still got the the top range. So when he blows up, if I go, Whoa! it's <laughs> it's there, I can do it, so. Is that the same for you, Michelle? Do you have to? Well, and that's the important thing is I, yeah, same. I, I you know, I, I don't smoke. <laughs> I don't do any drugs or anything like that. <laughs> uh, don't do drugs, kids. Drugs are bad. Don't smoke. Because when I, when I was in college, I, I had a singing coach because I was a theater major. And she told me, she's like, never smoke. It'll destroy your throat. So, and I, I never have. I never did because I always wanted to keep this healthy. So it's always good to take your vitamins and don't smoke and, you know, um, take care of yourself. You know, it is really, really important. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> I, when I'm in a session, I have like three of these. It's just like all of the water. And then I'm like, can I take a break? Because <laughs> I have to use the restroom. Exactly. So I'm drinking so much water. It's really important though. But like water's, you know, important for you anyway. I don't drink soda. Like, I stay away from, you know, that stuff. So I drink tea, water. Co I mean, I love coffee. You're not really supposed to drink coffee either, but I love coffee. I can't help it. <laughs> but um, I, I forgot what the question was because I was <laughs> I was just thinking of what Carter was saying. Like, I don't smoke, you know, because I try to stay healthy. And, um, yeah. So I was so asking about the transition of being able to keep the same voice over all the years. Are you worried about Oh, yeah. I mean... It it I I've noticed yeah I mean I I there are certain ways that you you have to do voiceovers and like singers too is like well like everybody everybody gets older and um it's tough I think maybe more so for women I don't know than men like C Carter sounds the same as like when I first met him like yeah almost like twenty years ago or whatever <laughs> I've known him for a while but um. It's it's tough, I guess, as you're getting older to voice like younger women. But at least on the flip side, as a woman, we usually voice uh, younger boys that are you know like ten years old, um, because it, it's harder for the guys, I guess. You know, when you're in when you get to like I don't know thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, or whatever, uh, to to voice like teenagers or like really young young boys. So. Um, at least we could still do that, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's important to like, when you're doing voiceover to, you know, use your diaphragm, uh, uh, breathe from your stomach and stuff and like use those muscles instead of from your throat. I've, I've actually noticed this is interesting and I'm talking to a couple people that are streamers that will stream and stream and scream a lot and, and I'm like, are you properly using your voice when you're streaming? Because I'm worried that these like these young people like in their early 20s and stuff are going to blow out their voice way too quickly and I'm concerned about that. So there's a couple that I'm like kind of trying to take under my wing and be like this is what kind of what you need to do cuz I'm really worried that before you even reach 30 you're going to blow out your voice. So <laughs> I'm trying to like help them because um I see them constantly posting on social media that it's like I can't stream today. I I have no voice. I can't stream today. I have no voice. And I'm like, well, are you doing this? This is like, are you gargling? Are you drinking tea? Are you are you vocal resting? And they, they don't even know what that means. It's like, what does vocal rest mean? It's like, you don't speak. What do you mean I don't speak? Like, at all? No. Like, stop <laughs> talking. <laughs> like, I've had to do that plenty of times too. Where especially if you have like super screamy things, like I won't speak for like two or three days at all, and I will just text like. Thank God, like, for technology nowadays that I could just text people. And, like, if people call me, I will text them and I will say, I'm not talking today. And they'll understand why, you know, which is good. But 
it helps. And some people like don't even know what that is. What do you mean vocal rest? <laughs> and it's important if you're screaming a lot, which is what we do. <laughs> right, Carter? You bet. So we actually have a question on the panel. So we have a question. What's your name? First of all, what's your name? Uh, my name is Brianna. Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Hi, Brianna. What's your question? Um, what was like your favorite like voice line you've ever done for like James and Jesse? What is your favorite voice line you have ever done as James and Jesse? Uh, what, what, <laughs> there's so many. Oh, go through the twenty years and your favorite voice line that you had. Oh, you know what was the good one that you it was really funny. If it's not on a plate, it can wait. <laughs> that was, I was if it's not on a plate, it can wait. It was really funny because they were just like eating. <laughs> when they get to eat, they eat. You know, because they're starving most of the time. <laughs> what about you, Carter? Um, you know, like I said, I try to uh, subtly like lift stuff from other places. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I can lift the Bugs Bunny line or something, and it's you know, it's just it's just kind of a throwaway line, so I don't get in trouble. But there was one. Uh, I, I used to have this this clock. This is a Three Stooges clock. And every time it would hit an hour, it would play something that the Three Stooges said. So That's there so was a cool. curly line, and I and I looked at the lip flap, and I said, "This is perfect because they're they're trying to figure something out, and they can't come up with anything." So I had James say, "I'm trying to think, but nothing happens." <laughs> my favorite James line, <laughs> and I got away with it. So. Thank you for your question very much. Anybody else have a question? There's a line up right by the microphone. Somebody's walking over there right now, so I can ask you a question right now. Um, one thing I always love to mention in voice acting panels, people always forget to know the acting part of voice acting. Can you talk just a little bit about how important acting is to the voice acting part? Carter, would you like to change? How important is your acting? How's well, acting for me, feel? it's it's instinctively because you can, if you really listen to yourself, I think you realize if you're, you know, being kind of stiff or dead. And I've had people that I'll, I'll hear on YouTube and they do a uh, wonderful tone, like Meowth tone and all this kind of stuff. But it's what you do with it, I think, that is probably most important. And of course, the, uh, the when you when when I'm adapting a script and I see the the character, the, the facial expressions of like Meowth and James, if they're completely goofy. I know it's not going to be like, uh, it's the nice weather we've been having. No, it's going to be funny. So I just kind of take my cues and I also um, try to go, not, I don't want to say overboard, but if, if normal speak is like 40%, I try to go 60% because it's got to be a little bit bigger than life and it's got to be more animated, so to speak. And it, it, that's, that's what it's worked, you know, it's worked for me, so. What about you, Michelle? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's all about bringing a character to life, right? <laughs> well, we do a lot of, of dubbing work, so at least we get a little bit of help from the Japanese because we kind of see what they're doing first. And it's not like necessarily we exactly mimic what they're doing, because sometimes, with, sometimes well, most of the time, what they're saying is a little bit different than what we're saying. So... Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's really important to have like a good director to working on this because we go in there kind of blind and here's the script go. <laughs> so it's like, we're mostly doing cold reads, but the director knows the episode inside and out and they already have watched it. They've already read the script. So they need to tell us like what's going on with the scene and how to read certain things. I I've worked with like some amazing directors that like come up with things that I never would have come up with. I'm just like, that's genius. That's really funny. Especially when it's like really, really funny. Um. <laughs> yeah, I think Lisa Ortiz, who's the current director for Pokemon, I've known her since probably 97. And uh, she's a marvelous voice actor already. She's been doing this. So when I work with her, I always come out with a better performance after she's kind of gotten a hold of it and I'm really grateful and I hope she knows how fantastic she is it really can Aww. make a huge difference we love you Lisa <laughs> <laughs> all right so we have another question on the panel I guess what's your name uh, my name is Mac 
Ma, uh, what is your question? Uh, my question is, I want to know in your industry, um, like your co-workers and people you know, do most people um, go to school, um, like work, like have a professional background for doing what you do, or a lot of people like discover their interests gradually and chose the career path? So the question is, basically, how do you get into voice acting and, and, and of yourself and of your coworkers? What's your schooling like, Carter? <laughs> Remember when you went to school way back when? <laughs> the school of hard knocks. No, I, I seriously backed into this. And, you know, I've done voices all my life because I'm a lunatic. But <laughs> to be able to have the, the chance to do um, OG Readmore, which was a one in a million, you know, shot. And then it was a union gig and it went on and on. And I just, I loved it. But I certainly didn't set out to do it uh, professionally. I, I didn't. But, you know, the thing about writing scripts is hard work. Voicing characters is like playing. It really is playing. And if you have a director like we do, who really loves us and has a sense of humor and I can make her laugh. And so <laughs> it's just all a real positive experience. It makes a huge difference for me. Yeah. Well, you I, I think all of us at least have some kind of schooling, whether either in high school or college or taking classes afterwards. I think all of us at least have some kind of training in, in, you know, either voiceover or because like, like when I was in school, they didn't have this. It's like you were a theater major. You did theater stuff. You're going to do you're going to be on Broadway. You're going to do Broadway. There was no voiceover. There was like there was no voiceover classes. I think it's a little bit different today now. Like they actually have voiceover classes, voiceover training. So it's like I had to find find a voiceover coach after college because I was like, they didn't have this at my college. <laughs> you know, I went to school for theater and acting and they didn't even have at my school too much of like on camera stuff. Um, they had more of that probably like in New York at NYU. I wish I could have gone to NYU, honestly. <laughs> they had a, um, a lot more opportunities there. It depends on the school. It's like I went to like a primarily theater school, which helped, it did a lot. Um, than than not having that but you can also have voiceover training afterwards which like a lot of people do so and that's what i did so i had voiceover training afterwards and they had different categories like um commercial and character voices and things like that and which was so funny that the teacher that i had her guest was casey rogers and which was so, i was like and i knew her and she was voiced waba fett she's retired now uh, Erica Schroeder took over for Waba Fett and some of her, and I took over for like Mr. Mime, which is so weird because like she was one of the guests in the classes that I was taking and I, I worshipped her. I was like, <gasps> I was like, oh, you're Casey Rogers. I know who you are. And I, I was totally fan. I was, I was totally fan. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I was totally fangirling over her. I was. <laughs> and yeah. it was so funny to become a part of Pokemon and then actually like when she retired like taking over for her characters and I was like dumbfounded I'm like oh but you like you taught me <laughs> so uh, technical question when you go in for a reading do you do line by line or do you scenes at a time it, it's usually line by line uh well like for dubbing right Yes, when you're dubbing. When you're uh, dubbing, you do line by line, or is it just like a scene? Can you just act more than one line at a time, or can you do scenes, chunks of scenes? Uh, sometimes it depends. Uh, it's tough because um, we have to m match the mouth flaps. So, so if if somebody has a line right after yours, and then you have a line after them, it's sometimes hard to catch where the mouth starts. We listen to a series of beeps in our headphones. We listen to three beeps. And then on the fourth, we call it the phantom beep. That's when we start to talk. So it really helps as a place marker for where you're supposed to start with the, the mouth movement. So some, sometimes I could do more. If, if, if they're more than one line, like right afterwards, 
um, then we could do that. But if like another character is speaking, then another character speaking after that, it's kind of it's a little more difficult to try to uh, match them. And a lot of times Carter records before me, which is really helpful. Thank you, because I like to follow him. <laughs> and Lisa knows she knows that I like to follow you, because then she'll play your track, and then I follow you and your rhythm and stuff and how it was yeah set. and if we're singing like team rocket maybe not so much lately but team rocket will occasionally break into like three-part harmony on stuff so i'll figure it out and i'll try to notate it as best i can on the script but i'll sing all the parts just as a guide because it's just it's you know it's easier so it's fine all right so we have another question what's your what's your name sir Written with Ralph here from Bitten Apple TV. Written with Ralph from Bitten Apple TV. Written with Ralph. Boys. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. It's one to If you guys want your characters to go somewhere, you know, where would you guys see your characters? Because I know a lot of the fans keep wanting them to end up together. So where do you guys oh. see your <laughs> I was like, go on a vacation? <laughs> yeah. 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 That you would like your characters to see, because obviously you don't write and create the original Japanese stuff. But where would you like to see your characters go? Uh, Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> like go on vacation. Well, it's funny because, like in the in the manga, I think of Pokemon. Jesse and James get together and they get married and have children and stuff, which is super cute. I I, I think I've never I haven't read it. I've just heard so. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Carter? <laughs> well, I, I remember there were certain points. Um, season nine, that uh, that's when you started, right, Michelle? Yes. Season nine was the first. So nine. all of a sudden, Team Rocket um, got more serious. And, and James was always thoughtful and sensitive. And I loved the guy to pieces. But it seemed that that season, it kind of made a turn. So what I tried to do was write it to really lean into that because I thought it was wonderful and Meowth too, you know, and Jesse too. It, there was a lot of serious stuff. There was one season, I have to admit, where Team Rocket got good at what they did and they wore all black. You remember that? Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I gotta get out of here. But they, weren't, but they weren't funny anymore, yeah. Right, they weren't funny and they wouldn't let me be funny. I couldn't do goofy stuff. Mm -hmm. But then they unlearned all that the next season. <laughs> but now they're back to being, you know, goofy as can be. So, they realized people didn't like it. <laughs> I do think they they have matured though, and 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 you know the the origin comes from um, obviously the Japanese. One thing I was going to say pre about a previous thing with the lip flap, um, you know, I when I write scripts, I'm looking at Japanese videos all day long, and they they care about as much about getting in sync as they do. Uh, I don't know. They don't care at all. They just don't care. They kind of do a live performance, but the thing is already drawn. So they'll stand there and they'll just take a shot. And, you know, nine times out of 10, they don't hit it, but it's okay. But we hit it. We want to make sure that we can, you know, um, that it looks really good. That's really important to us. So. So having watched all the Japanese stuff, do you now learn Japanese? <laughs> nope. I personally, I made a, a, a decision years ago that it would be better for me to write if I didn't know. The only Japanese word I know is hoi. That's it. I don't know anything else because I don't want to know. I, I really don't because then you start to get confused and even the translator sometimes will will uh, be speaking to his uh, a spouse or whatever and they're she's japanese and they disagree within the two of them what a line will mean so i just go out oh, of hell with it i do what i want and if if the boss doesn't like it they'll they'll tell me but it's better not to know i think <laughs> i always look at it as like if you're watching something on let's say netflix and you have the audio dubbing and then the the captions underneath so you can see the little translation and what they came up with i always think that that's a good way to think at it yeah yeah well those scripts the japanese scripts i mean some of the scripts are so wrong they're great <laughs> they're hilarious so i then i try to do a kind of a double backflip and actually incorporate what they said because it's just so completely goofy so but most of the time, it's you talk about lost in translation. It's lost in translation. So, so Michelle, you said that you have done video games, you have done twitching, you have done commercials. I know uh, Carter, you've also done commercials. 
Can you differentiate what's the difference between each level of voice acting, or is it just all the same? Do you want to take it first, or? No, go ahead, Michelle, because I know you're really doing, and you have so many followers doing your Twitch stuff. I just think it's great, 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 great. great. <laughs> I, I really miss talking to people, and it was a way for me to communicate. And in the beginning, I didn't work for eight weeks, and I remember texting Carter on the phone at like three in the morning, like, what do we do? <laughs> I, was, I was texting you all the time. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Cause like, I have to work and I need to keep the lights on <laughs> and pay my rent and stuff. <laughs> so I started, uh, so I started doing Twitch. Um, oh, it's been so much fun. Uh, we're called the Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> I love it. I love my group so much. They're so nice. I met so many sweet and nice and wonderful people. And you know, sometimes we get like bad apples in there. Then we have to do some stuff because it's like, oh, you're so mean. We don't want you here. Goodbye. <laughs> we have no tolerance for hatred in my group. No hatred in the Knott's Berry Farm. We are accepting of everyone. So be nice. <laughs> yeah, anything I've seen is really supportive and nice and they just love you to pieces. And more than that, they would, they would, uh, do anything Aww. anytime you need anything and I, I think that's that's kind of what it should be about just in general you know so but you're sweet. having contact I was going to say the very first three or four episodes um Pokemon was on channel 11 and they uh would have a we would do a promo the like they would run the the, the episode on Saturday but on Friday we would go in and do a promo for that episode that was coming up oh, and right. those we did all of us together so we all oh. went into a studio and it was me and Maddie and Veronica and Eric and just the whole original gang and it was so wonderful to be able to do that and we actually because we're not doing anything to picture we all did it together in the booth and i just always wish i wish i wish we could just do that sometime but Aww. it really is kind of one line or two lines at a time you know so we actually have another question from the audience what is your name mary mary what is your question two questions Let's get the answer to the first question first. All right, so the first question is, um, how are you able to convey the emotions of teenagers and do you feel yourself getting tired of those emotions? <laughs> oh, these kids. No. <laughs> I never uh, think of it that way, personally. Yeah. I never think about some age or, or not because it, it's if it's not universal if there's not a, a joke that maybe we'll have two or even three layers so that uh, little kids will get something that's totally rated g teenagers will get something that is kind of in between and then the bugs bunny generation totally gets what i meant but um I, if i started just focusing in on on just one age group i it wouldn't work I have noticed in some scripts that you've written, though, that certain things that you do right sound very teenager-ish. I don't know if that's because of your kid, because you have two kids. Well, I know they're not kids anymore. They're in their 20s. Right. But well, well, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but I'm sure that that happens because some of the lines you can't help yourself. You know, I, I just don't <laughs> I don't consciously do that. That's all. <laughs> what about you, Michelle? Well, it's it's funny because um, so I, I did like a little adapting here and there, but like for the past year, I've been working on the remake of Shaman King. And now I know exactly what Carter is going through with writing scripts <laughs> and having really tight deadlines and stuff and hardly getting any sleep. Um, but it's funny because I really feel like talking to a lot of teenagers like through my Twitch channel and stuff has helped me write better because the characters in Shaman King are teenagers. So I'm like, I need 
to kind of it's a little bit different than Pokemon, I think, because Shaman King is a little more serious, and it, it, it depends on like different kinds of anime that you're working on. If it because Pokemon is very for a certain age demographic, it's it's for like the younger generations, so you can be silly and funny and cute. But when you're dealing with like like teenager issues and teenager problems, um, I do a lot of googling. <laughs> I actually do a lot of research and a lot of googling and see like what would they actually say here because sometimes the translation is very broken it's very broken english it's not written with proper you know prepositional phrases and things like that and it's like okay what are they trying to say here and it's funny because we have certain jokes and idioms and uh, things like that that don't translate well into japanese and vice versa they have all these like puns and jokes and things that nobody would understand here at all i'm like I don't even know what this means. And I, I, I sent an email to the translator and he's like, yeah, you're not going to get it. <laughs> so I had to come up with something that I could see in the picture on the screen that, okay, they're doing this. So let me try and Google something and, and write this. And I look up a lot of puns and things. Um, so I know exactly like what Carter is going through with writing the scripts. So um, I, I feel like at least for me, <laughs> Twitch has helped me out in so many different ways. Interacting with teenagers and seeing what they're saying. Because they're saying th certain things that I would never say. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe that's like a new thing that they're saying. And I Google it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I try and incorporate that a little bit. Not too much because, you know, I I don't stray like too, too far from the Japanese. Like specifically with Shaman King because there's so many specific things in there. It's like this attack is this and this attack is this yeah, so which is i guess is in pokemon too you know you have to do like solar flare and this and you you can't change that really because they're like specific attacks and things right. so um but yeah for right. jokes and stuff like <laughs> so she has a second question second question uh, here. Uh, my second question is uh do you think that you guys uh, have a uh, position in culture uh culture exchange something like this uh, for me uh, because today I saw a lot of uh, Japanese anime uh, cartoon character here around and uh, actually today I took two Chinese Hanfu costume for my daughter but the hair seems like a, a total white surrounding and then they are too shy to change and the dress up here. Yeah. Uh, uh, the key point I think because we try to represent the character in Chinese cartoon and then the ancient character and here everybody just have no idea what you represent it. Yeah. So uh, from my point of view I saw your guys have a uh, uh, have a position in culture, transportation, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, Japanese culture, a little bit similar like Chinese, Asian culture. Yeah. Would you do something like a uh, uh, culture guest? Transfer this and this. Do you guys have that, that kind of feeling? Okay, so to, to shorten the question, what do you guys feel is your cultural position in the world with Pokemon or being as an actor as yourself through here in the United States and then how it is in other countries? Ooh, that's a very <laughs> complex question. Carter, would you like to go first? <laughs> oh, you're muted! You're oh, muted! I can't hear you anymore. You know, if I didn't know that, I think you'd be doing a bit, but we can't hear you at all. <laughs> Carter, you Hit the, the I'm mute sorry. Button. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. I'm sorry. I'm, I've learned. I think the hardest part for me is that if I'll, I I'll make a joke that um, is filthy, dirty in another country, and I had no <laughs> idea. So obviously they catch it. But so I've kind of over the last few years, I've I've kind of learned where not to go. And um, but it's amazing how. Uh, like when you're when you're at a, a a battle or something, and you got a bunch of people and they're rooting for you, you don't root in England that way. Let's just say that. So I really kind of got like, yeah, you know. But I I learned, and um, there is a way to kind of hit the straight and narrow, I think, and and keep things without getting too 
too too edgy, you know. And of course, when I'm looking at Japanese scripts, there are more than a few times where there's a gag that is based on two Japanese words that they put together, meaning something and something, and it comes into it turns into a whole nother a Japanese word. But there's a visual for it, and so sometimes it's like. I have to sit there for a while because I, I I feel like I'm in a corner. I don't know how to get out. So what I end up doing is just completely ignoring what was there. And then that usually works out. There was a script years ago where there were two pages of script missing. And it was all Team Rocket. And there was just nothing there. So I just wrote it. <laughs> it was so much fun. It was like writing it, you know, originally. But that kind of stuff, I mean, I feel like I've gotten enough of that over the years that um, I kind of take it all in stride and hope I don't offend anybody. That's the main thing. The, the teams help too a lot. I think, well, yeah, cause you got to work with like a team. It's not just you, like my, uh, the translator that I've been working with and the producer, like really, really extremely helpful. Uh, the people at VSI are, shout out to VSI in Los Angeles, California. They're wonderful people. I absolutely love working with them. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, they help me out a lot, especially with the jokes and the cultural differences between Japan and the United States and how we can make that work for an American audience. So, cause yes, subtitles will have the literal translation and it, it, which, <laughs> which you, you might not understand what that means. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, like American kids wouldn't understand what that means either. <laughs> I mean, you can look it up, but it still might not translate well. So I think when you have a good team of like translators and producers and, and things like that, uh, working on the show together. So if I ever, if I have a question and they get back to me right away, which is really, really super nice. So we're, working with a team, a good a team, a good group of people really helps to make the show better, I think has helped me a lot. <laughs> All right, so over the years, what is your one main takeaway from Pokemon? From when you started to now, what is your- catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Carter, what, what do you take away from this? Well, no matter how crazy it gets, and it gets pretty crazy and it gets pretty funny, but the end of the day, everybody's supportive. And there are plenty of times when Team Rocket is right there helping the twerps out. And so it's all, to me, really positive and um, reinforcing. And I think especially the last couple of years, it's kind of the world needs that. And uh, I don't think I've ever really seen a negative like they don't even, there occasionally will be a Pokemon that's like not very nice, kind of cranky, like don't mess with them or like smack your head or something. <laughs> but but overall, everybody, they're all good, caring, loving people in different ways. And I think that comes through. I, I know for me, I have to make sure that that's the main thing I, I see after I've written a script. It's really important to be positive, you know? How about you, Michelle? Friend, friendship, yeah. <laughs> Power is yours. <laughs> friendship. I, I don't know. Okay. I'm just thinking Mortal Kombat when they do friendship, you know. Sorry. It's... <laughs> do either one of you two have a dream job of a character you want to voice and have not voiced yet? Maleficent. <laughs> All right, Michelle, I'm going to put so you cool. You know, Maleficent was now. like... <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. What? Do Maleficent right now. Just do your change in front of the audience. Let's hear it for Maleficent. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's hear it. Give us a line. Give us a line. Well, well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what about you, Carl? What's your dream uh, character that you would like to play and have to do so? Well, so far, um, when season nine came around and I'd been doing it for a while and it went to a different production company and he was a good friend of mine and he basically said, well, what would you like to do? And I know for me, if I try to do some macho manly voice, like you can hear me talk, I don't do that. I kind of do this instead, you know? So I choose, I chose the characters that I really love. And then in the process, I was able to uh, 
get later on the character of Butch, but they're part of Team Rocket as well. And uh, Professor Oak, I love. He's he's probably the closest I get to an adult. But I'm I'm really happy with what with and I have so many Pokemon over the past that I don't even ask to to voice any new ones because I know that all these ones from the past are they're coming back like crazy like Muck and Grimer and Ratatat even though they call it Rattata now which I don't understand but I'm 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 really happy with them. Okay, so um, we have about ten minutes left, a little under ten minutes. So my question is, where can people learn more about you? What are you working on now besides Pokemon, if anything? Social media, all that kind of stuff, let people know right now. You want to go first? Oh, I Carter. do a lot of... Com. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead, please. No, 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 you, you want to go first? I'm sorry, I'm just, I was just joking. <laughs> I was like, jcc.com. <laughs> I do a lot of music and piano is my main instrument, but I also play guitar and write songs. And I've got quite a bit of stuff out on YouTube and I'm trying to carve more and more time out to do music because that's what I did, you know, in, um, in the seventies and eighties, I was, I played with like Dave Brubeck and Rupert Holmes and all these different jazz guys. And, and uh, I was really into it and I had kids and had to be home more. And so, and I love doing, this stuff, but I'm trying to carve out more time for music. But if you go on YouTube and you type in James Carter Cathcart, you'll get more stuff than you ever wanted to. There's a lot of stuff, all different styles of music, vocals. Um, I've got a couple of CDs out right now where they've got cuts from there. And I would love it if you would you would hear that because it's 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 a love, you know, and I hope to do more of that. And there was a show a long time ago. I got to tell Michelle's going to laugh. There was a show called the Ping Pong Club. Oh, no. <laughs> and we did two seasons of it. And I was the main guy of Maeno. And it was a bunch of eighth grade, basically horny kids from <laughs> school. And we could write anything we wanted. Uh, they didn't even do a script. They just gave us the translation and then we... we we did it on the fly and the only rule we had was we couldn't say the f word but we could say anything else we wanted to and that maybe pound for pound was the most fun i ever had because the uh, tony the salerno the, the the producer and we'd just be on the floor laughing so hard so if you ever want to see something that's pretty sick ping pong club is good <laughs> So, oh. besides your Knott's Berry Farm, what else is there out there? Knott's Berry Farm! Go to twitch.tv slash Michelle Knott's. Check out the Knott's Berry Farm. Um, I'm on, like, every... I'm on everything except TikTok. Everybody's trying to get me to start a TikTok now. I'm like, oh, I don't have a TikTok. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I got a website. I'm on YouTube. I got everything. Uh... M I C H E L E K N O T Z. I just have one L in my name. Because uh, my parents had to do it the French way because I'm a quarter French. Uh, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, check out my YouTube page. Um, I'm starting to make cute little YouTube videos and stuff based on uh, Persona 5 characters, uh, <laughs> which is super cute. So. Um, I, I love Persona. It's it's I love it. <laughs> if you haven't played the game, check it out. It's it's it, they're really fun. Um, but yeah, uh, check out twitch.tv slash Uh I have like seventy five hundred followers now <laughs> on Twitch. It's really cool. But we have a lot of fun, and I do a lot of group games too. So I like to get the community involved. So we play like Mario Kart, we play Splatoon, we play Smash Brothers, we play uh, Mario Party. It's like it's 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 so much fun. It's a lot of fun. I love playing group games with everybody. So to get everyone involved, so it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Do you stream at certain certain days, certain times every day? I'm stream tonight. Uh, <laughs> I usually stream Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights when conventions are because. I haven't done a convention. Well, I do. I, I'm doing these conventions, like virtual conventions, but I haven't been in person at a convention since we were at Anime NYC in November 2019, and that was the last time I was physically at a convention. So, but I've done a few of these like virtual cons and stuff, um, which have been awesome and fun. I love chatting and talking with people, but um, 
yeah uh, so i'll be streaming some stuff tonight and tomorrow check me out because like when you sign up with twitch and then you follow somebody you get a notification on your phone of when they're going live so i'm usually around like 8 p.m eastern time um friday saturday sunday nights so it's fun it's a good time all right so we have another question from the panel question what's your name my name is ashley ashley hi ashley I'm um, just curious, do you guys have a favorite Pokemon? Do you have a favorite Pokemon? I, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> so Michelle has no idea. I don't know. Uh, I have some, something. <laughs> what about you, Carl? What's your favorite Pokemon? Well, it's, it's hard to pick a favorite, I must say. In terms of just a golden heart and a loving Pokemon, uh, probably Carnivine because you know he's been biting my head for years and <laughs> years and but he's always so happy and well-meaning and sweet and I, I really like that that kind of thing of course Meowth is a, a talking Pokemon too so you know so but that I mean there's a bunch of little I love little critters back there and and uh and there's a lot of them but I think Carnivine really was my I think my favorite all right, so let's do a quick technical question. Technical question. If you're going to start off being a voice actor, what technical equipment do you need, especially now because of pandemic? Oh, boy. Go for it. Good microphone. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I mean, I have a whisper room because I started doing audiobooks at home. So I, I already had one. I was trying to tell everybody, like, I, I, I have a whisper room. I, I, I can work from home. <laughs> Help. <laughs> But, uh, ooh, good mic. You know, it's not even necessarily you need the most expensive and perfect microphone out there. What really matters is your surroundings. If you're in a big, open, hardwood floor, echoey room, it's not going to sound good. The most important thing is, like, like, where you're recording. When I first started out doing stuff at home, I had my closet filled with pillows and clothes and blankets and I actually got um, acoustic foam and I stapled it to the wall. When I moved <laughs> out of there, I had to spackle and repaint the whole closet. But it really helps when the sound is so deadened that you, you like, it's so much easier for the engineer to fix things like that. So. I mean, I have a whisper room, but you know, those are like a lot of money. Those are like three or four thousand dollars. Um, but like, what you can do is just just fill your closet space or wherever you are with as many fabric items as, as you can. Carpets. I hate actually that I live in a hardwood floor, floor place because carpets are extremely good. I actually have a space carpet underneath my whisper room, which also helps. Um, cause things vibrate way easier with like tile or hardwood floors than they do with carpets. Carpets absorb the sound much better. So, um, yeah, your space is the most important more so than I think like, oh, I have this, you know, $10,000 microphone, <laughs> yeah, but it's not going to sound good if it, you're in a bathroom and it echoes. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you have the most expensive microphone out there. The most important thing is your surroundings. Mm. You have to be in a deadened space. There can't be any kind of echoes. You need that acoustic foam. You need the blankets and pillows and clothes and carpets. I think is is the most important when you're recording from home and having like your own home studio. Um, Cause there's tons of programs. You can use Pro Tools, Audacity, um, SoundForge, um, uh, what's another one? Adobe, Adobe Audition. And they all pretty much work the same. You can use different kinds of programs and they're fine. Um, but your space where you're recording, I think is the most important, uh, from home. <laughs> Did you, you echo those uh, notions there, Carter? I do. Um, I have, uh, I actually haven't had a recording set up per se at home, but out here, we got, we came out here to Indiana, March 12th, 2020. We came out for what we thought was going to be two weeks. Well, 
<laughs> uh, it all hit the fan the next day. The borders were closed. The plane stops flying. So what the company I, you know, which is the production company that handles Pokemon now, they sent us all kind of like a care package with a USB mic. And I had gotten some soundproofing from Amazon and I have a bedroom upstairs and it's really quiet and nice. And I like working like that. But when I'm in New York, and I started doing it, people told me I was nuts, but June of 2020, I started taking the subway to the recording studio because number one, the engineer is one of my best friends. And number two, it's just, for me, it's just so much easier to not worry about, you know, ha handling the recordings and all that kind of stuff. Cause one wrong move, you know, and you're a goner. So I go there and I was careful. I just got my second booster yesterday, by the way. I hope you're all getting jabbed. Um, but. Yeah, I'm happy with the way things. I've had to do a couple of fixes, depending if I was somewhere where I had my phone and I would go into a closet and hide in between all the coats and stuff. And I would record like that and it fit right in and you, you really couldn't tell. So I'm kind of on the fly. But now it's the studio in New York or the upstairs room in Indiana. That's the deal. Do you go back and listen to your work after the show is done or you've had enough of it and keep it moving? <laughs> Sure. If I have time, um, sometimes I don't have a lot of time. I I, I try, but um, lately, at least for the past year, I've been so busy with Shaman King that like I haven't even had a, a chance to watch all of Shaman King. Like we'll get the screeners. Screeners are um, mostly for the people who are watching it to try and pick out mistakes or if anything's missing, because they then they have to re-record that. If if like a character is like. And it's like, oh, that line wasn't recorded. Then they have to go back into the studio and the director has to get the voice talent and they have to re-record that line over again. So I haven't <laughs> really had a chance to watch those either because I've just been so busy. Um, so if I have time, uh, <laughs> but I, I did try to catch a couple things with Shaman King because I wanted to see if they kept a couple things. Like Carter tries to get away with certain things and I did too. Uh, cause I did a, um, a Christmas story. You'll shoot you, shoot your eye out kid line. And I'm like, can I get away with this? <laughs> and they kept it. And I was so happy. I was like, oh, they actually kept it. So I, I watched it on Netflix and I'm like, I, I just, I just want to see like what they keep and what they don't, because it's not the writer's final decision of what is kept and what's not. Um, that's up to like the director and then the producer and stuff who watches it afterwards. Um, what they're going to keep and what they're not going to keep so at, at least like with some of the jokes i was like oh cool they kept it nice <laughs> i don't make it a point of watching i mean i i because there there we're a few episodes ahead so by the time the thing actually gets broadcast if there's something i want to see i can't it's just, i'm too busy i can't keep track of everything but every so often if i'm watching something on netflix and you know when you get to that main menu and you're looking at all the different shows and there's pokemon i go you know what i'm curious and, and i will watch an episode just to see how it ended up and uh, it always seems good to me you know but i don't make it a point of watching episodes all right so we are almost out of time so i want to give you a final moment to have any final thoughts you want to mention to people listening to this online right now people who are watching this in the future on our web page no Michelle? Would you want me? <laughs> um, all I can say is like, well, uh, I don't know. Come, come check out the Knott's Berry Farm Twitch channel. We have a lot of fun. And especially when we play group games, like join us for group games. You like to play Mario Kart or Smash Brothers or Splatoon? I love Splatoon. It's so, so much fun. Um, you splatter paint on people. It's really fun. <laughs> um, come hang out with us on friday saturday sunday nights if you're not doing anything and you're just chilling at home or whatever come join us and hang out it's 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 fun and i got a i got a great group of people and they're wonderful and amazing so um come hang out with us it, you know if you don't have anything else to do or you're you know you're lonely we'll be friends with you <laughs> What about you, Carter? Final thought? Sure. Um, because I kind of literally backed into voice acting. I mean, I always wanted to do it, but but it was an accident that I, I got into it. My message is for anybody that wants to do it, you can do it. You just have to take a few steps. I 
I just started talking out loud, almost to the point of getting arrested. And, <laughs> and I put together about a two minute uh, tape of 10 second blurbs and just, I did my favorite voices and most of them were insane, but that's what I like to do. And then I just started talking around to people and um, you, you, can, you can do it, you can get in it. So I hope that anybody that, that really wants to do it, do it. And when you're making a demo tape or talking to somebody, don't hold back. That's the main thing. Don't hold back. If, I think the crazier you are, the better it sounds. And hey, take over. I love it. All right, so my final thought is this. Thank you once again for being guests on the MCON panel. Hopefully next year, you'll be here in person. It'll be awesome. Everybody in round of applause, we'll hear it. So make sure everybody goes to the East Metal Public Library website. That's www.eastmetal.info. They have tons and tons of programming, most of which are free, much like this convention. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Love you. <laughs>